Arizona. All right. Actually, so he heard it back the first time in Arizona. Yeah, I shouldn't yeah, say did. that. Yeah. That is so three bobbleheads that we give away. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for being a part of the hashtag Too Far Tuesday. We continue with Lewis Riddick in 10 seconds. You're going right after my weakness. I'm ad. I don't make me add in my head. I'm not good at that. I can't do quick math but I in mean, my head. It really isn't that hard. Mike and Mike, reminding you, if you miss any of the show, including A.J. Hinch, the manager of the Astros, in Hour 4, you can listen to all four hours of Mike and Mike On Demand in the ESPN app. And now you can subscribe to our Best Of podcast. It's all available in the Listen tab of the ESPN app. Okay, so Mike and Mike Lewis Riddick is here, so all of the football action continues on the field, and we're, of course, seeing a lot of the developments off the field. And we were talking earlier this morning with our legal analyst, Ryan Smith, about the legal ramifications of Jerry Jones, for example, demanding that his players mm -hmm. stand during the national anthem. And the Miami Dolphins have made that into a rule. Again, you have kind of a unique perspective because you were a player for a long time and you also worked in front offices. So you, you sort of have a, a better sense, certainly, than we do of the yeah. kinds of conversations and concerns that take place there. So what is your sense of that right now? If you're a player on the Miami Dolphins, if you're a player on the Dallas Cowboys and you feel it is important to you to make some sort of statement, W where do those conversations go? What what, what do you think happens, and, and what does it lead to? Uh, you know what? I, I had this discussion a little bit yesterday, and really what this is coming down to now, now people are making business decisions, Greeny. That's what it is. It's business decisions, period. Mm -hmm. Owners are looking at the bottom line and how the protests, regardless of whether or not they have it right as far as what the message is supposed to be behind the protest, which they don't, it's about business, mm -hmm. period. These guys are ruled by the bottom line. They're ruled by the dollar. They're ruled by how much advertisers are spending, how many people are sitting in premium seats and premium seating. That's what they care about. They care about that more than what these players are fighting for, and that's just a fact. So they're making a business decision. Players have to make one too because the fact of the matter is it's already been laid out. Right now you can see where it's heading. If you want to take a very significant social stand as far as standing up for what you think is right and what the and fight for equality and fight for social justice instead of allowing social injustices to continue, it may cost you your career. It may cost you your ability to earn a living at, on a professional football team right now. Right. So you have to make a decision. That's really what it comes down to. It's not you're not selling out if you stand up. If you're making a business decision because this is how you support your family, this is how you've worked your way out of poverty, this is how you've made a better life for your children. Because the owners are doing it, you have to do it too, and you have to find other avenues to still try and fight to make the changes that you want. And that's unfortunate. It puts the players, you're right, in a very tough spot because. Now, if they stand, now people who aren't risking what they're risking are going to start criticizing them, saying, exactly hey, right. Wall, now you're, not, now you're not being as strong and as tough as you said you were. Maybe you don't care about us the way – yeah, I do, but I also have responsibilities. I have a responsibility to my family, responsibility See, to taking care of them. And it's, it's, a bad, it's one of those hamster wheel situations. It is. It really, is. And, where, then, and, and then you know tough. what happens? You know what that's happens? Tough. The initial point gets lost. It, it's the initial been point has been lost, yeah. and, will, and now will continue to get lost when you enter this into it, where everybody says free speech, free speech. We have free speech, but it doesn't mean it doesn't come with consequences. Absolutely. It that's absolutely a, that's a great does. Point. And, and companies can make rules. You can disagree with them, but if you break their rules, then your free speech can cost you. There you go. It, it, it can cost you, and then you have to make the decision. You're right, because that's what people are going to do. Oh, it doesn't mean as much to you, because now you're going to get suspended. Real easy to say when it's not you. You yeah. out there that's There's not being able to now support your family and make that money. So it's just a decision you have to make. I can believe this. I can say it, but I have to know there are consequences that may come along with. That's it. right. It's it's very it's it's easy to make hard decisions for other people. Yeah, it's very easy to sit there and go. You should stand up and fight for this. You just say, well, if they're taking your checks. If you're the one who's sitting at home, and you're the one who's sitting here wondering about what's coming next for me in my career, it's a little. It doesn't. It doesn't make you a sellout. It doesn't make you less Agreed. passionate about anything. And, and as I said, they ch they made this rule in the NBA. They made the rule, and you don't see any. We talked about this earlier, Lewis. They're the most, some of the most socially active players, yeah. athletes out there. There's a rule that you have to stand for the national anthem. Sure. These guys aren't fighting it. These guys aren't trying to do it. They're finding other ways to get their voices right. out there and heard. They're not saying, you know, the man's not keeping us down. You know, look right. at what the NFL's, we're going to do it too. They're not doing it. You know, right. th there's a line there that says, okay, I, this will cost me. I have to find another way to try and get my What would be across. interesting was, would be if somehow, some way, 
an owner or a group of owners or there would be some dialogue that said, hey, guess what? We're actually having more real substantive conversations about getting together with players to not talk about the anthem and whether or not we're disrespecting the flag, but to really help them enact some of the changes hammered at home last night on SVP. He has no weapons. He has no wide receivers. He has no continuity on offense, no consistency on offense. So he wasn't able to get into a rhythm to where he could actually really show what his best stuff. But, Greeny, early on in that football game, you saw exactly what his, is going to really be the, the calling card of his career. A lot of athletic move the pocket, 15, 20 yard deep outs, bootlegs, zone read play action, pick up first downs with your feet, creative play calling because of the fact that he has like Alex Smith type of running ability. I think the, fu- the future is super, super bright for him. The future is super bright for Chicago. It's really not on him anymore. It's on Ryan Pace. It's on whoever's going to be the head coach if it's not John Fox. It's on the organization right now to really set him up for success as far as get him some help. If he had some weapons like the like Deshaun Watson has at Houston, it would be a totally different story. If he was sitting down there in Kansas City like Patrick Mahomes is eventually going to inherit some of the weapons they have, man, you'd, we'd be sitting here just blowing it up about how good this kid looks. But he's playing on a team right now that is just really – it's just understaffed. It's just understaffed for him. He can't show his best stuff. So impressed with some of his throws. The first Absolutely. One on that third down out route that yeah. he threw was, was – I mean, it was that far away from Trey Wayne's. I mean, it was on a rope. It was yep. – he can make every throw. The yep. first thing, obviously, that they're going to sit down and say, and when you roll right, stop throwing back across your body. Oh, I mean, sure, he, sure. I mean, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. Times, he has done that, but he's very confident, obviously, in his arm, and obviously he's going to learn how quickly the windows close. He learned some of it that, that last night, but mm-hmm. I'm with you. I mean, just his – they helped him with the play calling, with yep. the rollouts, the stretch runs, and then the boots. They did a nice job of that. But but forgetting all the stats, and the stats when you look at them weren't great, under sure. 50% passing, but forget that. You look at command and poise, and I think he mm-hmm. had all of that. No question. Look, one one of his first routes that he hit, he it was a five-step out that he went from under center. You could see the footwork coming away from center was quick. He hit his back foot, ball was gone. Yeah. So the timing was – his – acclimation to working from under center, which everyone was trying to hammer him for pre-draft also, you can see that has really been accelerated. So they've done a good job of coaching him up, and he's done a good job of working on it. It's, you know, Steve Young talked about it last night pregame on Monday Night Countdown. He said, look, the, the Bears need hope. The organization need, needs hope. The city needs hope. And then we'll just work from there. He gave them that and then some. It is really on the front office and coaching staff now to say, look, let's not mess this kid up. We haven't had a talent like this at quarterback in a long time here that we that is homegrown for us. Let's not mess it up. They're lucky. They've got him now. Now just get the stuff around him. All right, so there's that side of it. The other side last night is the Vikings who get the win. Um, that Sam Bradford goes down, a re-injury of the knee. I saw a columnist in Minnesota say he should never have been on the field yesterday anyway. Mm-hmm. They have Case Keenum, who's had some very bright moments during this season. Yep. And maybe they get Teddy Bridgewater back. He's eligible to come off the PUP list after their next game, start practicing. We'll see what happens. So how do you assess the Vikings right now, particularly relative to their quarterback situation? Well, I, I think it, it does no good for anyone to have a situation that's a revolving door at quarterback. So really, look, Sam's durability and his availability has always been his Achilles heel, no pun intended in any way, about his career. And right now, if they can somehow manage to manufacture some sort of running game to support whoever it is at quarterback, which I believe, just from a health perspective, needs to be Case Keenum going forward, then the football team will be okay. They will have to play the quote-unquote complimentary football game, but they have some some really nice weapons on on the outside with Diggs and Thielen, and and Kyle Rudolph is a top-notch tight end. So, look, this team is still set up. They just have to make sure that it doesn't become – that kind of, like I said, that revolving door, that turnstile at quarterback, so it messes up the rhythm that they're trying to establish on offense. Because on the defensive side, look, you, you saw some absolute freak athletes last night. Everson Griffin and Daniil Hunter are freaks. And, and we, we throw that word around a lot in the media. If you see those guys up close and you watch them last night, these guys are studs. So this, this team is set up. I, I, just don't know, I just don't know how really – and, and it's a shame to say it. I don't know how you can count on Sam anymore. At this oh, point I don't think you career. can. I, I, you just, I, I, I and, and it's probably been a couple of years since you probably felt that way anyway. Yep. But, uh, you know, when he's healthy, it's nice. He can throw it. He's just not going to be. But availability I, is, the, is the key, and he doesn't have it. Completely just, agree. And, and you just fear last year this team was 5-0. and oh. Last year this team had an excellent defense, mm-hmm. but the inept offense yep. put so much pressure on the defense it just wore down. You mm-hmm. just hope that doesn't happen again this year. 
Where where do you like Minnesota and kind of the pantheon of the NFC of where yeah. they may fit with Carolina playing better? Philadelphia looking excellent right now. Green Bay doing what they do. Yeah, you know, without Dalvin Cook, and if they don't settle down at quarterback and get that un, get that kind of uh, you know ni- nice and leveled out, I think they're going to be a step below some of these other teams that are rising right now. Look, Carolina. They can beat you with the run. They can beat you with the pass. Cam Newton is hitting his stride. If you look at his stat sheet the past two weeks versus the first two weeks, and then just look at it with the eye test, he's taken off. Yep. All of a sudden, it's time to be scared about Cam again. It just is. Uh, Green Bay is going to be there because Aaron is just Aaron. Philadelphia, if their corners can hold up against the high-powered passing attacks on defense, then they're going to be there because that offense, that offense can bludgeon you with blunt, or they can beat you on the outside with big, fast wide receivers, big Strong possession wide receivers and one of the best tight ends in the league in Zach Ertz. So they're going to be there. Uh, Atlanta's going to Atlanta's going to be there. You know when Julio is right and Muhammad Sanu is out there and Taylor Gabriel, they'll put up 40 on you in a heartbeat, and that defense will get better. And here's the other team. Look, the, the Rams The Rams have an interesting game this week against the Jaguars. I think the Rams are going to be there in the end. I know that sounds – look, I've been saying crazy things about the Rams for about the past year. I think they're going to be there. So, how, you know, how, what does that mean for Minnesota? I don't know if – because of the uncertainty of quarterback, if they'll be able to keep pace with the other teams that can put up a bunch of points. That defense will have to play lights out. They're going to have to play like Denver-style defense from right. two years ago in order for them to be in it in the NFC. Because I think right now there's a whole bunch of teams in the NFC that are kind of rising right now. It's going to be cool to watch. Mike and Mike Lewis Riddick's here. We need some straight talk. Brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Best phones, best networks, no contracts. Two of our colleagues, uh, both of whom you know well, Adam Schefter and Max Kellerman, both raised the idea yesterday here on ESPN and different shows that it was a mistake for Odell Beckham to be on the field in the situation that he was on Sunday based upon his contractual situation. Again, right now he's playing for $1.8 million, and he's a guy who, whenever it is he can, he can get a new deal, he stands to make something in the neighborhood of $50 million yep. guaranteed. But he's got to be standing in order to get there, and we all saw what happened. So Mike addressed that from the standpoint of a former player. Your perspective on this I'm fascinated to hear because you were a player, but you've also sat on the other side of that table in the front office. So what is your take on the notion that we may eventually get to a place? Will we get to a place where players in this situation like he is and Mike Aaron Donald is and no, Zach Martin, Khalil Zach Mack. Martin, those guys where they just say, you know what, I'm not playing until you give me my contract. I think we're on the we're on the precipice of that happening. Because unique players like this, and it's not every player, and it's kind of like the players who decide not to play in bowl games, you know, coming in, coming into the draft, who are in, who have unique leverage. When you have, I, I said this yesterday, when you have the hammer, and you have the leverage, you better use it as a player. And this is having been on the other side of it too, because I know that the team will use it against you, as when they're trying to do the best deal for the club. The, the player is charged with, and the player's agent is charged with, maximize cash to the player, keep the player protected because we know how quickly your career can end in this game. And you know that's what Odell was scared about. You know that's what those tears were about when he was sitting there and he's getting and he's getting caught off. You could almost hear in his mind going, I can't believe the thing I feared the most just happened to me. Would I blame him for doing that? Would I have sat out if I were him? We had this discussion on NFL Live. And I, and I sat there and I went back and forth about it because you're right, I kind of sat on both sides. You want all your good players on the field, obviously. You want to say, look, we'll work it out while you're here. And football has inherent risk. But when you have leverage like he does because of how special he is and like Aaron has and like maybe Khalil will have, maybe you need to use it because that, that's, that's just the way the game is rolling right now. And you know the teams will use it against you. And I, and I say that having, again, sat on the other side to where that's not what I would want a player to do to me in, term, in terms of I'm trying to negotiate a contract with them, but I understand. Let, I understand let, it. Let me take both sides of that then. Now you're in the front office. You're not a player in the front office. And how much of the team's success or lack of – has to do with it. So for Odell, say he's holding out. Mm-hmm. His team is still going to be 0-5. Does that make management say, well, he, it's not like he's coming in and helping us. Let him sit. And on the other side of that, if Aaron Donald's not in and this team is 3-2 and two still and still looking good, are you like, man, we're doing pretty well, and he could make us a lot better, so maybe we do give in. Yeah. So how does, how does that work from the, play, from the team yeah. success? Uh, you know, I, I think, yeah, I mean, that's a great point, Mike, and I, I think because of how much football is an interdependent game, there's always ways that you, you can always point to certain data points to justify what your position is, right? So if a team is doing good and you're feeling like, hey, look, well, like in the case of Aaron Donald, if the team is 3-2 and two and we say maybe he makes us a lot better and you bring him in, would that make you more inclined to get a deal done? 
I don't know. I, I guess it could. I guess it could. And I guess in the case of the Giants, you know, they could still sit here not having a win, even if Odell was there. So, you know, that makes you kind of want to sit back and go, well, you know what? We're not going to pay him. I, I kind of look at it like this, though. I think that sometimes you look at players and you understand that individual players can only do so much, and their value has to be sometimes determined by what you really think that they bring to the table individually and then kind of extrapolate that into the team context. So don't hold it against them if a team is doing bad, and they would still be doing bad if you were there, because that doesn't take away the fact that Odell is special, and he deserves special treatment. Right. It doesn't take away from the fact that Aaron is special, and he deserves spe- There's always, there's never, like, what, what does the saying go? There's never the wrong time to do the right thing, and the right thing is to take care of those special players like that, because you know when those guys, when you don't have them, and you're, and you're trying to figure out who to give the money to, it's tough trying to parse out, you know, that's those salary cap dollars. These guys, it's easy. You know they deserve top-of-the-market money. Just take care of them. They're special kids. They only come along once in a generation. That's the thing. You wonder if we're just in a special time where Zach Martin is going to be the highest-paid right. guard, Aaron Donald's going to be the highest-paid interior lineman, and Odell's going to be the highest-paid wide are, receiver. These are the ones that are easy for me right. from a front office perspective. Like, I, don't, I'm not, I would never really sit there, and I've had these discussions with buddies who are salary cap nego- uh, managers and the contract negotiators, and I used to sit and talk to these guys a lot when I was in the front office and say, you know, why are we sitting here, like, haggling over a couple million or a couple hundred thousand? These guys are special, man. If we want to like, if we want to sit here and pinch pennies and try and hammer some people over the head, there's plenty of other guys whose contracts are coming there's up. We can like do that. that we can. <laughs> you know what I mean? But this guy right here, take care of these guys. These guys are difference makers. These are guys who put fans in the seats. These are guys who give other players in the locker room when they come walking in the door. There's other guys who are looking at them like that's a bad dude, man. I want to, I, the, I want to work harder because that guy's special. Don't mess with those guys. Don't sit there and try and pinch pennies with them. The only thing I'll say is one of the reasons that the owners do sometimes do that stuff is because they can. Exactly. Because there are basically no ramifications to them exactly. for doing so. And one of the reasons not to give Odell Beckham the money before the third year is because this might happen in the third year. Right. And you'd be paying him $15 million to sit on the sideline instead of but you 1.8. you know what? If, if that's the case, you wouldn't pay anybody. No, I get it. You know, you know what? And I know, and I know what, what you're saying. They try really yeah. hard. I know what yeah. you're saying. And you know what? <laughs> and you know what? And a lot of times you are exactly right. The reason why people tried to wield the hammer is because they can wield it and they do have it. Yep. So that's why I'm saying when the player has it and you know you're in a unique position, Swing you'd be it. foolish not to, to, to not. That's right. You'd be foolish not to use it. All right, I got to take a short break. We'll come back with more with Lewis Riddick, both on and off the field. Plus, we've got a bobblehead. Bobblehead's giveaway. Got a few of them, yeah. Golick will find the one he likes. Stay right there. Back in a moment. Mike and Mike.